On day one, I spawned in as a baby cursed golem with 10 hearts. Whoa, my skin. I look pretty cool. I then looked up and saw a wizard standing in front of me. Ah, who are you? Hmm, not quite what I was expecting. The wizard looked a bit disappointed, and I wondered if he was the one who made me. Huh? What do you mean? You are my weakest creation yet. This isn't good. Hey, I'm not weak. He then told me that he was wrong about me, and it made me feel like I was a mistake. Well, what was I supposed to look like? Doesn't matter. The truth is you're a little weakling, and the zombies will feast on you in no time. The wizard then vanished and left me questioning everything. Zombies? Oh no, I better run! I saw a bunch of zombies everywhere, converging on me. I had to do something. Get away! I'm only a baby! The zombies started hitting me, and I found a way to escape before they were able to kill me. Phew, I was close. Who was that wizard, and where could he have gone? Suddenly, I got ambushed by some creepers who were flooding the area I was in. I better be careful. Everyone wants to eat me. I then noticed that as a cursed golem, I could pick up locks and throw them to deal damage. Cool, this'll work. I then grabbed anything I could and chucked it towards the creepers. Ha <laughs> ha, take that you green meanies. I managed to kill all the creepers and realized I wasn't as weak after all. Hey, not bad. I'm stronger than that wizard thinks I am. On day two, I decided I needed a safe place where I could stay away from predators. I'm gonna need a good base of operations. So then I started gathering some wood to make a wooden pickaxe, and then mined some stone and made stone tools, such as an axe, a sword, and a pickaxe. Nice, now I'll be able to defend myself better. I then used some of the wood I gathered to start building my base, and it was turning out pretty great. All right, this is a good start. While I was doing some building, I started getting attacked by some corrupted chickens. Ah! You guys look crazier than regular chickens. I tried fighting them, but they were small, and there was an overwhelming amount of them. I need to get out of here. There's just too many. I had no choice but to abandon my barely built home and used my ender soul hand, which helped me to teleport away from the chickens. Whoa, what other powers do I have? I was sad I had to abandon my base. Now I'll have to start over from scratch. I need to find some food now. I wanna feel stronger so that I'll be ready to defeat more enemies. It was very dark. And luckily I found a nearby village with some crops such as carrots and potatoes. Oh, this all looks scrumptious. I started stealing the crops, and then suddenly I was getting attacked by an iron golem. Ugh, wait, another golem. Hey, don't attack me. I'm one of you guys. I was so upset, and then I saw the golem get glitched out of existence. Whoa, where did he go? I was so confused after what I had just experienced. He disappeared as soon as I got angry. That was weird. Did I do that? Was that part of my special powers or something? I decided I didn't need to overthink it. I continued minding my business and stealing some of the crops. And then I headed out of the village. On day three, I found a new spot where I could rebuild my base. Hopefully I don't get attacked again while I'm building my home. After I made some good progress, I started placing some chests and furnaces inside of my home. Let's make this place nice and cozy. I took a step back to admire my creation and I really loved what I had done. It looks awesome. Hmm, what else should I add? I then thought of the perfect idea, a farm. I'm gonna make sure I have all the crops I need so I never go hungry again. I then went to find some sheep and killed them for their meat and wool. This meat will make for a great meal. After getting the meat and the wool, I cooked the meat in my furnaces. Ooh, this is so yummy, just what I needed. The meat was so nutritious that it made me transform into a bigger cursed golem with 50 hearts. Oh, wow, I just need to keep eating this good and I'll be unstoppable. I also noticed that I had a new vampire ray staff that shot blood particles. Whoa, I need to try this out. Suddenly some pillagers came to attack me, but now I was much more prepared. Ooh, this is perfect. I used my new powers to kill the pillagers and realized life was only getting better from here. Oh yeah, I love these new powers. After that battle with the pillagers, it reminded me of when I was a golden alay for 100 days. Ah, uh, those were good times. I then went back home and made a bed so that I could rest for the night.
For days four through five, I woke up from a good rest and went wandering around the forest. Time to go exploring. As I was walking around, I heard some barks coming from somewhere. I felt the need to go investigate. Hello? What's going on around here? Just then, I saw the wizard killing a pack of wolves. Oh no, why is he doing this to those wolves? <laughs> Darn luck, little wolf, but not so fast. We shall see what this will do to you. The wizard then turned the last wolf into a cursed wolf. What is this sorcery? The wizard then laughed and left him in his misery. <laughs> I decided to go up to the cursed wolf because I noticed how sad it was. Hey, are you all right? I saw what he did to you. <laughs> That's not true. You look awesome and different from anyone else. Don't worry. I'm going to get revenge on that stupid wizard who did this to you. The cursed wolf then started warming up to me now that he knew I was here to help him. Of course, let's be friends. I'll name you Glitch. I then went home and made a den for Glitch so he could feel happy and safe. Hey Glitch, you like your den? From days six through eight, I went mining. Gonna need a lot of resources while I'm down here. I found some iron and coal and used it to make myself an ax, pickaxe, and helmet. Then I stumbled across some diamonds. Whoa, diamonds this early in the video? I bet I can make something crazy with these. Now time for a diamond sword. I made the sword upside down and made a cursed diamond sword. A cursed sword for a cursed golem. This weapon may be all bent out of shape, but it's still sharp and will get the job done. Watch out world, I'm ready for any kind of fight. I spoke too soon because just then I was attacked by some creepy crawlers. Yuck, spiders. I swung my cursed diamond sword at the spiders and there must have been some cursed effect on the sword because when I hit the spiders, they floated up into the air. The magic of being cursed. After killing the spiders, I collected all the string they left. Now it's time to head back home. As I was traveling home, I ran into some amigos. They definitely lived up to their name since they were friendly. Hola, amigo. We have a warning. Something terrible is about to happen. That doesn't sound good. Care to explain? The wizard is back and they are creating new monstrous foes. You better watch out. I got this, amigo. I hope I see you again. I then continued on my way back home. Once I got there, I hit my bed and went to sleep for the night. On day nine, I had the strangest dream with the wizard. Where am I? I looked around to see what I could find and noticed that it looked like it was the place where I was born. I then saw the wizard walk up to me as I stood in fear. Hello, little gullum. Do you remember me? That horrible wizard really had the urge to ask me if I knew who he was after everything he did. Of course I remember. I'll never forget what trash looks like. What did you just call me? The wizard started getting super angry and made some weird faces at me. You heard me, stupid piece of trash. I regret ever creating you. What a disappointment you are. Yeah, well, you're going to regret those words when I'm ready to kill you. Just watch. Ah, you really think that you can do that? Yes, I'm getting more and more powerful by the minute. <laughs> think again, you little weakling. The wizard then started laughing as his voice got distorted, and then he transformed into a giant ape. Whoa, what are you doing? You'll have to get through all nine of my strongest creations before getting to me. So good luck, you fool. No! I woke up and couldn't believe it. This fight was going to be very complicated, as I was not only trying to fight the wizard, but all his creations as well. What am I going to do? On days 10 through 12, Glitch came over and asked me what the yelling was about. Oh, Glitch, you won't believe what just happened. I then started telling him about my dream with the wizard. He's way stronger than we think, and he has an army full of weird creations he wants me to fight against. <laughs> You think so? Glitch was reassuring me that as a team, we could stop the wizard if we focused hard enough on a plan. You're right, we can take them down. I just need to become stronger. 
I then thought of how defeating each creation would give me more powers, which could aid me in the final battle. If I defeat all of his nine cursed creations, I'll have all the strength I need to take him down. Just then, the corrupted chickens came back and started attacking Glitch and I. We were able to kill all the chickens using my powers of the vampire staff and my endersoul hand. Stay away from my friend. Yeah! We then got their meat to do some cooking. Time for a feast. After we ate a good meal, I told Glitch about my plan. I'm going to follow where they came from. I bet it could give some answers. I then left the base and then went into a field where I found a little chicken. Hey there, little chicken. What are you doing out here all alone? <laughs> I knew that this bird creature they were talking about was definitely the wizard's first cursed creation. I know what's going on here. Do you happen to know where you last saw that giant bird? <laughs> All right then, stay safe little chicken. I then thanked the chicken for the information and headed off to find this first weird creation. For days 13 through 15, I kept traveling as I knew I was getting closer to my target. It must be here somewhere. I then finally Whoa. spotted the beast and saw saw that it had a long neck and hollow eyes that were already staring at me. This is the first creation? Oh no! Suddenly the creature started yelling some weird noises at me. What does that even mean? The cuckoo immediately started throwing a bunch of cuckoo eggs while attacking me. I then saw the eggs started hatching into cuckoo chickens that started running everywhere. I fought against the creatures using my awesome weapons, such as my cursed diamond sword to make them float in the air and my vampire ray staff so that the projectiles could help me keep my distance. Ooh, these weapons work wonders. We battled back and forth while I dodged the eggs and took a couple of his hits, but was able to defeat the monster. I did it! After I killed the cuckoo, I noticed that it dropped a map. Oh, sweet! This will be super useful. I opened up the map and noticed there was nothing in it besides land. After looking at the map, I saw that the wizard <laughs> appeared and told me something. It's not bad. Just eight more to go. <laughs> you got that right. I'm going to take all of you down. The wizard quickly vanished after what he had told me, so I took the map with me and headed back home. On days 16 through 19, I arrived back home and told Glitch all about my latest adventures. Glitch, I need to share what just happened to me while I was gone. Glitch was glad that I was alive, but really worried for me at the same time. <laughs> I killed the first creation. Then I saw the wizard and he warned me about the other eight I have to kill. I knew I could fight the rest of the creations, but first I had to be prepared because something was telling me that they were gonna get more and more powerful. I got this. I just need to armor up. I needed to build some tough armor to help me battle against the creations. So I went mining. I'll be back, Glitch. Guard the base. As I went mining, I found a bunch of iron, enough to make a full set of armor. This will be just what I need to protect myself. As I was mining, I started getting attacked by some cursed serpents. Whoa. I fought against the serpents, and when I killed them, some even dropped bones. Take that, you serpents. I killed all of them, using my sword and soul hand, and then finally left the cave. That was a good fight. These powers are awesome. As I left the cave, I found some cows, so I could kill them for their meat and leather. Oh, nice. Now I'll have more meat to make sure I'm well fed. I then left home and made nine item frames and a room to place them all. Okay, let's see what we're working with. I started placing the first map on the top left corner to see what the whole picture would entail. Hmm, I'm not quite sure about this. I decided to go to bed and it left me wondering what it all meant. But for now, I needed to get some rest for another day of my journey. On days 20 through 23, I woke up and figured I could make a statue to show the wizard I was still alive. This way, he'll know who's the boss around here. Before I left the base, I started seeing all the planks in the house turn green and corrupted out of nowhere. Whoa, what is happening? I figured the wizard must be slowly corrupting the world. I need to stop him before he corrupts everything. I then started making a pen and gathered some wheat. This little pen will make a great home for my sheep. Alrighty, time to go now. All right, just warning you, there are going to be terrible monsters out there, but we can fight them together. We headed off and then found some sheep. So Glitch used his laser beam cannon to kill all of them. 
What? How did you get that glitch? I was amazed with Glitch's powers. He was cooler than I thought he was. Okay, let's keep finding more sheep. Um, and this time, not kill them. We then found some more sheep and gathered them to take them back home with us. This way, little guys, follow me. I then put them in their new pen and went to find some corn flowers and some red poppies. These are nice. The colors will look great. Out of nowhere, I started getting attacked by some demon wolves. Ah! Take this, you freaks. I was so strong and killed all the demon wolves with just a few hits. And then I headed home. Now it's time to dye my sheep. When I arrived, I took the red and blue dye and combined them to make the color purple. I then bred my sheep and started dyeing them. Would you look at that? Purple sheep. It was a long day of work, so I went to bed and fell asleep. For the days of 24 through 28, I woke up on a bright sunny day and went to work on my statue. I grabbed some wool from my sheep and then got to work. We made both legs, but I ran out of wool, so that's as far as we got for now. Glitch and I then stopped to admire the work we had done, and we were proud of how it looked so far. Oh wow, it's looking awesome, don't you think? After working on the statue, I headed off to find a village to talk to the fellow villagers and get some answers. I need to find out more about that wizard. I asked around to see if anyone knew anything about him, and some people began to share their stories. This wizard is trying to ruin our lives. If you know anything, please share. Yeah, yeah, I know Credence very well. He's my brother. A what? Seriously? I then wanted to know more about why he went mad, so I asked him some more questions. Why is he like this? Well, he was always an odd child growing up. He even turned our parents into pigs. My poor mom and pap. This led me to think that he was always like this. Born a monster, perhaps. Well, he must be stopped. He's trying to curse the entire world, and soon enough, all of us will die. Just then, the wizard appeared and began turning all the villagers into pigs. What's with all this trash talking? Haha, <laughs> take that, you fools! Raidens, please! We're brothers! You're not my brother. You're a pig! He then turned his brother into a pig and burst it into laughter! Stop this nonsense! The wizard then walked away, so I took the opportunity and killed all the pigs for some food. I'm gonna need better armor to fight that monster. I then took the meat with me and headed off to go mining. On days 29 through 33, I headed into a cave to do some mining. All right, time for an upgrade. I gathered enough diamonds to make a diamond axe and a cursed diamond pickaxe. Mm-hmm, this will work great. I used my cursed diamond pickaxe and it was able to mine all the blocks around the block I mined in a three by three pattern. This makes mining so easy now. I then headed out of the cave and went home only to find out the wizard was there. What are you doing here? I'm here to spice things up for you. Have fun with this one. He then summoned up a giant saber-toothed cat, Flippardo, who had super sharp fangs. The cat began launching towards me with all its might, and it was extremely fast and strong. I tried keeping my distance from it and used my cursed diamond sword and vampire ray staff to make it float so I could avoid some hits while it was in the air. Take that, you feisty cat. Eventually, I was able to kill it, and it dropped another part of the map. Oh, yeah. Yeah, another clue. I then took the map with me and placed it on the second part of the map wall. Hmm, what is this telling me? I noticed a pattern was beginning to form, but I could not understand what it meant yet. We need more maps to figure this out. I realized I needed more help to fight against the wizard, so I went out to seek it. On days 34 through 37, I ventured on my way back to find the Amigos. Amigos, I need to talk to you about something important. Amigo! Oh, look at you, looking so strong. <laughs> so, what's going on? I began asking them for help with fighting against the wizard. I need all the backup I can get. Can you guys help me? I hate to break it to you, amigo, but our king has been captured by the wizard, and he's being guarded by some giant... T-Rex looking monster. Some scary stuff if you ask me. If the amigos were going to help me, I needed to help them back. So I came up with a great idea. Don't worry, I'll save him. Then maybe you can help me once you have everything in order. Oh wow, really? You would do that for us? Okay, 
Then count us in! I left the amigos and went searching for their king. For days 38 to 40, I made it to the desert and found the amigo king in a cage. I then saw an oil arus who was guarding the king, which meant I had no choice but to fight against it. If I wanted to save him, I used my sword to slash it, but it was a tough opponent. It even spawned wither skeletons. Yeah, take that, you crazies! Oh no, the wither effect! Eventually, I defeated the freak, and it dropped another part of the map. Oh look, a new clue! I grabbed the map and then went to free the Amigo King. Your honor, I'm here to set you free so you could go back to your amigos. Hey, amigo, thank you. I was starting to feel sick in there. Now that you're free, I want to ask you something. Would you be able to help me defeat the wizard? The Amigo King seemed hesitant to help me at first, but then said something that gave me some hope. Look, I just need some time, okay? I'll make you a little something that will help. Okay, anything helps. I thanked the king and then made it back home. I placed the third map on the wall and it was all starting to come together. However, it was time to expand my base. Now that I was a bigger golem, I'm gonna need a larger home to fit my size. Hey, at least the wood didn't turn green this time. Well, spoke too soon. On days 41 through 43, I gathered my wool and started working on the statue. After working on the torso, we took a step back and felt great about the turnout. Wow, I love the work we've done. After all that work, the <laughs> wizard showed up and said I was running out of time. You had better hurry. Soon I will curse the entire world. Why would you do such a thing? The wizard then used his powers to transport me into a vivid memory. I noticed that it wasn't my memories, but his. What is this? It started with entering several moments of the wizard's life, showing me the harshest things he experienced. You left me alone all day, mother. Why do you hate me? I knew you were a freak since the day you were born. Then I saw another memory of the wizard being bullied by another villager. You freak show? <laughs> we then saw the story of his wedding unfold, where his wife left him at the altar. I can't marry a freak. I don't want my kids to be like you. But I love you. I never loved you. We then snapped back to reality, and it honestly made me feel so bad for the wizard. I'm sorry for what you went through, but cursing the world is still wrong. You'll never understand my pain. The wizard then summoned Enderman Setos and disappeared. No, wait! I fought against the Enderman Setos, who were extremely fast, but with the help of my sword, I killed them all. What an experience that was. For days 44 to 49, I figured I needed to head out to sea to learn more about this wizard. We must sail away and find more answers. I then crafted a boat and started traveling towards the ocean. What a nice little boat. During my sailing, I ran into some sirens who gave me nausea, but luckily I used my vampire staff to kill two of them. You should have not made me sick. I then glitched the last siren out of existence. Whoa, I forgot I could use that power. After that, I continued on my journey. In the ocean, I found a big ship which had skeleton pirates on it. Huh, I wonder what kind of things lurk around here. I climbed the ladder off the ship to go talk to them and they seemed friendly too. Fellow sailors, have you seen anything odd in these waters? You betcha. We're looking for the biggest catch of the day. Am I right, boys? Oh, really? Do you happen to know what it is? Last time I heard it was a monster. Hey, Gurky, what was the name of that giant? Just as he was asking his fellow pirate friend about the catch of the day, a giant Ictormi appeared. The Ictormi began shooting green explosives out of their mouth, which caused the ship to explode, killing most of the pirates on board. Oh, no. This is insane. I knew I had to act fast, so I jumped into the ocean and noticed I could breathe underwater. Whoa, I didn't know I could do this. I fought against the creature and even teleported underwater to confuse it. Eat that! The creature ate some of the skeleton pirates, but I continued my fight, making sure I wouldn't get eaten as well. How do you like blood shooting at ya? The creature threw some explosives at me, but thankfully, I was strong enough to defeat them. Whoa, he dropped another map! I took the map with me and got back on my boat to continue sailing back home.
On days 50 through 53, I got my buddy Glitch to help me work on the statue. Would you look at that? We're almost done! We added some more blocks to the statue, and then took a step back to see the progress. And we were amazed by all our hard work. Oh wow, we're doing a great job, Glitch! After working on the statue, I took some time to get a feel of all my powers. And now, I needed to work harder on perfecting them. I need to master my abilities. I realized that the one thing that could improve my fighting skills would be to fly. So I headed off to do some learning. I traveled to a tropical forest biome, where I would start my training. This area full of trees would help me learn faster. I then ran into some tigers, who did not seem happy to see me. Whoa, 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 stop attacking, stop attacking! You don't know who you're messing with! Even though they were able to pull me in with their claws, I was still easily able to kill them with my powers. Take that, feline! Suddenly, a praying mantis came up to me and shared some words. That was quite impressive. You have potential. Thanks! I'm still learning. The praying mantis then offered to train me so that I could become stronger. Join me. I'll show you my ways. I agreed to join him and learn as much as I could to improve my techniques. We then started our training by picking up and launching blocks that got heavier as I made progress. Oh, this is getting harder and harder! You've done well. Now let's see how well you are at avoiding my attacks. We then started fighting against each other, and I dodged his evoker fangs with my teleportation. Aha! Your skills are on point. Now time for some meditation. A clear mind will do wonders. We then started meditating, and during that session, I slowly started to levitate. Whoa! This meditation is gonna help me fly! That's right. Meditation is key for focusing. If you focus hard enough, you will fly in no time. The more I focused, the easier it was to get myself up and fly around. I finally did it! Look at me flying! One last thing before I go. Remember this. Sometimes your enemies may not be within this realm. Good luck. Thank you for teaching me your ways. After our training session, I thought of his words and flew my way home. I'm ready for anything that comes my way. On days 54 through 58, I had returned home thinking of what the praying mantis had told me. He said some of my enemies may not be within this realm. I wonder what other realms he's talking about. Just then, I heard a familiar voice and then saw the Amigo King. Amigo, I brought you something. Hey, it's good to see you again. I would never let you down, especially after what you did for me. He was holding a gift he had brought for me. What is this? It smells pretty good. It's a mushroom stew. <laughs> I didn't want to offend him, but I honestly had higher expectations for his gift. After all, how could one mushroom stew aid me in my battles? Thanks, I guess. Do you know how this stew could help me? Oh, you see, it's not just any mushroom stew. This will take you across many dimensions. Now I knew what the mantis had meant. There were other dimensions I had not explored yet, and with the help of this stew, I could find my way there. That's awesome. Thank you so much for this. You're welcome. Use it wisely. After the king left, I took a sip of the mushroom stew and felt my vision begin to wobble. Whoa, this is definitely doing something to me. Suddenly, I was in a new world, which had several floating blocks and purple skies. I can't believe it. That stew is like a teleportation device. I then figured that my new cursed creation would be somewhere here, so I went looking for it. Just then, I ran into some endorial, some squid-like creatures with many eyes that would float around me. Ah, you weirdos, take that! I used my sword against them and flew around, but after I killed them all, I then kept looking for my bigger opponent. There it is, a Fluto Queen. I finally found the cursed creation, number five, who was a giant alien bug-like creature. I began fighting it, and the alien would attack me with her giant bug-like arms and even shot Fluton at me. Ah, it poisoned me! I flew around dodging her Fluton and used my staff to weaken her. She even spawned many Flutos. But after a long fight, I finally managed to kill the beast and it dropped another map. We're one step closer. Suddenly, I was back in reality with a map in my hand and was ready to add it to my wall. Thanks for those words, Mantis Sensei. You were right. For days 59 to 62, I was finally ready to add the final touches on my statue. Time to add some nice details and bring it to life. Before I got started, I needed to get some more resources, so I went exploring. I started collecting some terracotta so that I could then dye it into different colors for my masterpiece. 
All right, this amount is good. I then took all the materials back home with me and started dyeing the terracotta in all the colors that fit the scheme of my statue. Ooh, this is some beautiful colors. We then headed towards the statue and started by working on the legs. After working on the statue for a while, it was now nighttime, so I worked on studying the maps. What does all this mean? As I was doing some thinking, I heard some slithering outside and found Glitch fighting a bunch of Draconia. I'll help you, Glitch. As I helped Glitch fight against the Draconia, I noticed they gave me hunger effects when I hit them. Oh no, this is making me weak. We finally killed them all. And I realized I needed better armor to avoid that happening to me again. I need to be well prepared. On day 63 through 66, I went into the caves to mine for lots of diamonds. This time, I'll get plenty. I then collected enough diamonds to make a full armor set. After I finished building my armor, I put it on and then started getting attacked by some Cerebus, who were fiery horned demon wolves. Aha! You demons have nothing against me. They tried biting me, but I killed them using my sword and had my great armor to protect me. All right, let's keep looking. I then found a big open open area and saw a mutant wither skeleton. Okay, this giant is gonna be a little tricky, but I got this. I started fighting against the skeleton, but it knocked me out into the air and used its jewel blades to hurt me, which also gave me a wither effect. Ah, I have to keep going. It was a tough battle because of the effects he used against me. But of course I was a better opponent and blew him up. Oh, look, another map. Oh yeah. Now that I had another map, I headed home to place it next to the others. On days 67 through 70, I arrived home and placed the new map on the wall. This is starting to look familiar, but I still don't understand it well enough. I needed at least another map or two so that I could understand the bigger picture. So I left the maps and went to work on the statue. I started adding more details to the head and arms of the statue and noticed it was starting to look more and more like me every time. It's really coming together now. As I was walking back to my base, I noticed a magma cube. So I quickly pulled out out my vampire staff and started shooting blood at it. What is your problem? You coming over here with your dangerous flames? Stay away. Really? What is happening? They explained that in the nether, there are monsters that are so large, it wasn't safe to stay in the nether anymore. One of the creatures even escaped. I see. Do you happen to know where the portal is? All right, thank you. Now carry on, my dude. I then left the magma cube with some answers and knew where I needed to go. On day 71 to 74, I traveled with Glitch looking for the nether portal in the jungle. We then ran into a leap leaf, a big leafy like creature that looked absolutely wild. We both fought against it. Glitch was using his awesome beam powers while I used my flying skills and shot it with my staff. We finally defeated the monster, but then I noticed Glitch wasn't looking his best. We did it, Glitch. Hey, you look pale, my friend. Are you all right? Out of nowhere, Glitch turned into a Mateus, a huge monster, which totally caught me by surprise. I don't want to do this. Glitch was now trying to fight against me, and I had no choice but to fight them. No, Glitch, please. I fought against Glitch, realizing I was about to kill my best friend. And then I was finally ready to take my final hit. I went towards Glitch with all my might and killed them, which made me incredibly sad and cry a little. How could I lose you like this? Oh man, this sucks. As sad as I was, I noticed he had dropped another piece of the map, which meant he was cursed into being one of the wizard's creations. I grabbed the map and then went to give Glitch a proper burial. Goodbye, my friend. On day 75 through 78, I went looking for the nether portal and eventually I found it. Whoa, there's something else around here. I noticed that there was also a netherite monstrosity boss. This must be the eighth creation. It was time to fight against the beast, so I flew towards it and used my staff to shoot blood at it as it hit the ground to smash me. You can't catch me. Ha <laughs> ha. After flying around the beast and shooting it, I finally killed it after all the lava it shot at me and then transformed into my final form. Oh, nice. Now I have 100 hearts. I look so powerful. After killing the monstrosity, it dropped a map, so I went to pick it up and then realized something. I think I need to take care of other things before I enter the nether. I took the map with me, destroyed a block from the portal, and then headed home before any other beasts approached me. On day 79, 
89 through 84, I returned home and saw that the magma cube from earlier had some backup and set my whole base on fire. Oh, you're gonna regret this, you cubes. I was so angry to see everything I worked so hard on in flames, so I charged at them with full speed. How dare you ruin my base? After flying around and shooting all the cubes, I finally killed them all. I looked at my burnt home and felt very discouraged. Everything I once loved was taken away from me. Well, there's one thing left. I went to finish my statue, as it was the last precious thing I had left in this life. I guess I gotta transform back to my original form to work on it. After my transformation, I finished adding the details to the torso of my statue and noticed that the ground of my base turned into rainbow blocks. Aw oh man, there isn't much time left before the entire planet is cursed. I need to do something now. I left the statue to head towards the nether portal. Once I got there, I placed the obsidian I broke earlier to ignite it. For the days of 85 through 89, I made it inside of the nether and went looking for the massive cursed beast, the ninth creature could be anywhere. Uh, this place looks crazy. It was not hard to spot. The lava behemoth was humongous. So I didn't waste any time and went in for the attack. Be cursed. Although the creature was big, it was super fast, using its head to knock me up and sometimes swallowing me whole. Ugh, that was gross. I fought it using my vampire ray staff and cursed sword. And suddenly, I now had a lava stick to help me out. Take this lava. Ugh, oh, I guess that didn't really help out since, you know, you walk on lava. This lava behemoth was a tough opponent as it was the wizard's last creation. But then I saw the perfect opportunity to finish it. Over here, you freak. I flew to the perfect spot and bombarded the behemoth with all my powers and finally killed it. Right before my eyes, all the lava turned into obsidian, and then a map fell down. Oh yeah, this will be the last piece to place on my wall. After that fight, I headed back to the portal and exited the nether to head back home. On days 90 to 93, I made my way out of the portal and found myself in an entirely new dimension that was barren and creepy. This doesn't look like home to me. I went exploring it for a while, but saw no signs of life. Just a bunch of dust and eerie sounds every Everywhere. How do I get out of here? I then immediately got attacked by a hollow team that was spinning around me shooting lava. This guy is tough. Oh no, he gave me nausea. With my new form, I was unstoppable and used my staff and aimed for its head, which then killed him. Nice. Okay, where am I? This place is starting to look familiar for some reason. As I made my way to an open area, I noticed it was my base in another dimension. What? My statue, my house, what is going on? I then realized that the worlds must have been collapsing on themselves after all the cursing from the wizard. Everything looks the same, but it feels different. Just then, Glitch rose from his grave and told me some terrifying words that made me feel miserable. No, Glitch! What? No, you were dead and you weren't you. Glitch, it wasn't my fault. I had to do it. He then disappeared and I took a deep breath. I had to focus. I needed to go back to my dimension. Oh, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. I began phasing in and out until I finally felt myself dissolve into another reality. On days 94 through 96, I entered another realm, but it wasn't my home. Am I stuck in a loop? This still isn't the right place. I looked around to notice all the details and saw that everything was purple like me. So I went exploring. I need to get some answers. Maybe I truly am cursed. I then saw the wizard along with a group of baby cursed golems and I couldn't really tell what he was doing. Hey, you! I tried confronting the wizard, but he couldn't see, hear, or feel me. This must have been another memory. My cutest and strongest creation yet. The cursed golems. Hey, can you hear me? I'm talking to you. The wizard had no idea I was there. I felt helpless. Then the wizard started getting attacked by an arachne. The cursed golems all ran away in fear instead of helping him fight, except for one of them. Don't just stand there weeping your eyes out. Help me here. Together, the cursed golem and the wizard defeated the arachne and her spider babies. But then I noticed that the wizard was now upset with the rest of the golems for leaving him. You cursed golems are a 
disappointment. The wizard then looked at the cursed golem with anger and was ready to kill it. While this was happening, I had the sudden realization that that tiny golem was me. I'll spare your life, wipe your memory, and send you to the overworld to die instead. No! On days 97 through 98, I had faded away from that memory and made it back to the overworld. Now sad knowing the truth behind everything. How could he do this to me? That evil wizard! I headed home and noticed that more things were looking out of place. The trees were made of bedrock, rivers were filled with lava, and now the rainbow blocks were expanding. Nothing is the same anymore. Along the way, I started getting attacked by some spider pigs. I was tired after that mind-boggling experience experience, but I had to keep fighting. Die in the fire! After killing the spider pigs with everything I had, I ran into the praying mantis and the amigo king, who were together by a nearby jungle. Hey guys, what are y'all doing here? It's dangerous! Both of them were worried sick about the cursed world taking over. Orale, you gotta do something about it. Our home is no more. Uh, yeah, what he said. I'm working on it, boys. I gotta keep moving. It was day 99. I finally made it home and put the last part of the map on the wall. I then looked at the final picture and it finally started to make sense. It's the wizard's location. That's what it was the whole time. Once I finally understood the map, the wizard showed up. Hey, I need your help. Oh, and I see you finally figured out my puzzle. And why would I help you? All you've done is cause chaos. You don't understand. I was trying to protect you all this time, ever since you were a baby. Then please explain, because apparently all you've done is hurt everyone. The wizard then started telling me about his latest creation, a bomb waiting to explode. I didn't mean to take it this far. I regret leaving you, but now I've created something that I cannot control. I need your help so that we can stop it before things get worse. Uh, fine, I'll help you, but I'll need something in return. Sure, I'll do anything. This is serious business I'm telling you about. All right then, you need to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you never miss another video. Sure thing, you've got it. Now, help me please. All right, let's go. The wizard then took me to his base, and the whole time I made sure to have my guard up, just in case he was planning anything sneaky towards me. On day 100, we finally made it to the wizard's base. There he is. Oh, wow. We looked up and saw the giant lunar storm wail in the sky. I knew this would be my toughest fight yet, but at this point, I had no choice but to help the wizard. He's out of control. What should we do? We have to charge at it with everything we got. You ready? I agreed to help the wizard take down the monster. So we transformed into his ape form. Let's go! I then flew up into the sky and attacked the whale directly using my staff and my lava stick to shoot lava explosions at it. The whale kept shooting dangerous cannon-like projectiles at us. And at some point, it even swallowed me whole. Eventually, I made my way out of his mouth and we combined our forces, destroying the lunar whale at last! Finally! We did it! We killed the beast! That was a tough fight. Thank you, Bozo. Alrighty, I gotta get back to my work. Not so fast, you wizard! Uh, son, no! There was no way I was letting him get away with his evil intentions, so I glitched the wizard ah. out of existence! Goodbye, freak father! Bronzo!